tres, dos, uno, cuatro. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> this installment of the Nota podcast has been brought to you by... Got it? <gasps> okay, you ready? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, hello. My name is Eric. And my name's Daniel. <laughs> hey! This is the Noted Podcast, where we talk about movies and TV shows and other things. Hey, Daniel. Mm. I, uh, I have a question for you. Yeah? Um, could, could you pass me the subscribe button? Well, I, 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 let me try my best. You are, you are through the discords, but I think I have a strong enough arm. <clears throat> Do you, I, I'll... Did Dang you get it. it? I didn't even think about that. I tried. I, I really, I used my hips. I've been watching Joe Burrow. I used my hips. I think I got it there. The good old Prescott twist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta do that warm up. <laughs> oh, yeah, we guys, just, guess I, what? We just, iso- we just isolated, like, all of your viewers because none of them watch football. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the great part. We, see, we're expanding. We're trying. Mm, we're trying mm-hmm. to hit other groups of people as well. That's, exactly. But if you didn't get the hint, that's a that was a that was a really horrible joke about subscribing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if you haven't done that, you should, because that would be nice. It helps us and uh, other people find us. Um, also, to turn the notification bell on so that you can know when we post things. It's it's always yeah. like uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, and then maybe Give sometimes that. Mondays, sometimes Saturdays. It's... Give that bell a nice little tickle tackle. You know, you know, rub your finger up on that bell. Oh, make that bell all blue and ready for you. <laughs> what the? Fuck? <laughs> hey, Daniel, I have a question. Yeah. Do you dream? <laughs> uh, sometimes, yeah. I had a dream. <laughs> Wait, you, so, so you, you do? Uh, yes, yes. Like, <laughs> yes. like are you a, a a vivid dreamer, or like you do you actively dream? Like, I mean, I dreamed. I I I. I uh, in this, it comes <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, dude, I, I got some weird energy going on here. <laughs> <laughs> That's big what, about, what about you? Uh, well, I mean, it kind of matches the. Uh, the energy of this movie, honestly. I oh, dude, honestly. <laughs> this is a movie that takes place in a world where a machine allows therapists to enter their patients' dreams. Bum, bum, bum. But it gets stolen. All hell breaks loose. A young female therapist can stop this. Paprika. Uh, that is the description <laughs> of this movie on Xbox. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, the description doesn't prepare you no, for shit. No, no. So, so, so if you're watching this movie, I need you to to watch it. Pause, go watch it, come yeah. back, yeah. and be with, happy with that and also kind of... <laughs> yeah, be happy and also kind of angry. That You'll be happy you watched it, but you might be a little traumatized. Just a teensy yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> like... It, it it might it might get you it, <laughs> it, it this is a weird ass movie super mm-hmm, super mm-hmm. super good though it, in my opinion it's super good um, oh it's yeah so so you do dream right yeah. you're oh, yeah. an active dreamer I, no i mean i don't dream like super often but when i do i remember it most like i remember oh. a, a lot of the specific ones like I mean, I remember that I needed to sign a contract. Sign the contract. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, only, I only got you here because you're big for the brand, okay? You're big for the brand. <laughs> I just need you I, to sign the contract. Uh, I also had a Listen, dream. Listen, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I also had a dream that I got uh, kidnapped by a stalker, so that was spooky. Oh, dude. And that was like shit. last week. Last week I had that dream. No bro, way. Was, yeah, oh, bro. It was terrible. I woke up what? in cold sweats. Oh, not a fan. <gasps> I'm not, not going to lie. Fan. I'm not going to lie. You said that, and 
my heart rate went wait what no god that's terrifying yeah was it was it like was it like memorable like do you actually feel like you got kidnapped oh oh dude yeah i was like i was tortured too it was not fun it was a bad news bears dude i had to like kick the dude in the groin and like crawl out and like leave and like what the fuck bro it was it was that is is, that's like a proper nightmare it was it was a <laughs> thank you. Nah, it yeah, was a, dude. And a proper time nightmare. Yeah. I mean, like <laughs> it was it's a proper nightmare. <laughs> it was no, it was not good, dude. No, you want to know what I think that you would uh, you would prosper from? <laughs> therapy. I think <laughs> dr- dream therapy, Daniel. Oh. You know, <laughs> as long as it has a spicy redhead in it, I'm happy. Oh my god, right? <laughs> dude. I mean, come on, dude. Dude, if paprika's if... in all my dreams. I would be um... fine with it. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know, we've bantered about this. We've, we've yes. gr- like, you've heard me squeal like a chihuahua <laughs> like 12 times already. So let's jump into it. Uh, this movie begins with like a super high speed chase through Dreamsville. This detective is trying to capture a man with no face. Bum, bum, bah. Meanwhile, a redhead um, bails him out. Like in every moment, like he he gets like uh, uh, like uh, on like a train, he gets like choked out from behind, right? And she like breaks something over the the, the no faced person's head. And then he's like stuck in a cage in in a circus, and she gets him out as well. And it's crazy. But they they wake up from this dream, and we we learn that people in this world can like dream share through this thing called a DC Mini, and it's insane. They have like a recording on it. They're watching yeah. it on a laptop, like proper therapy too. Yeah, it's like proper stuff. It's just so, it's so solid. And then she goes to leave and he's like, oh, we're going to see you again. Kind of like desperate. Daniel, okay. uh, opening scenes, right? So like, yeah, it's insane. So it is, I really like the part where, so they get right into it and they show you kind of like the type of animation style this movie's going to be right away. Because the first sequence of these dreams that this detective is having in his nightmare he's standing in like a circus and he's talking to someone and he's like hey that guy down there that's the suspect don't trust him he's the traitor and she's like really and then a spotlight appears on him Mm. and then and then the dude who's like the circus instructor is a old friend of his from like a colleague or something and then he points at him and he's like you sir and then he like teleports in the cage, like he takes the 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 sheet off the cage, and the detective's in the cage now. And then where the detective was standing, the same body is there, but you can no longer see the face; it's faceless. Yeah. And then uh, everyone from the crowd starts chasing him, but they all have oh yeah, the they all have the face. detective's face. Yeah. And then he like falls through the ground like it's like you're falling through like kind of like a balloon pudding. Um <laughs> and then then he appears on the train and then uh goes through that montage. So I was like they immediately they're like, Hello, are yeah. you ready to have nightmare fuel? Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then he gets to the, the slow mo hallway, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Where he, like, sees this person, like, you hear, like, a person being, like, gunned down. And then there's this person, like, slow-mo falling, and he goes to, like, chase after the person who shot, right? Because they're, like, turned around and he can't see him. And, like, he's running down the hallway, but it's, like, it's, like, ribboning behind, like... And he, it, and like, he can't get to it's, them. Anymore. Yeah, it's so crazy. It's so cool. And the kid who dies in the hallway, we learn, like, right after that when she's, like, who's the kid? And he's, like, oh, it's someone I'm... Yeah, uh, some that some died in the homicide. case I'm working. Yep. Yeah, in the case he's working. It's a good opener for Dude, sure. It's solid, and then we get like like a traditional like anime opening. Honestly, oh like oh yeah, like she's like writing like oh, it's just, it's Dude, so good. Oh, yeah. It's so good. So we then we get a trans like you're saying transitions through the title of the movie, and it's on the road, and Paprika's jumping around through the city. People are like kind of chasing her. She jumps into like. A motorcyclist's shirt and like yeah. no, uh 
Yeah, yeah, like a biker shirt, and then get, starts riding a motorcycle, then gets into the car, and it's super, like, it's really creative the way that you can tell, like, she's even walking across the street, and then the, the cars, like, stop, and they're, yeah. like, kind of glitching, and she just walks, so you can tell, like, in the dream world, Paprika is, like... She's omniscient. She, she's she's God. Full, <laughs> she's full control. Yeah. She knows what she's doing. No one has more con- like more experience than this. Like she's Tom Brady in a two minute in a two minute drill, like two minutes left on the clock, Sorry. no no timeouts. Peppery, cause your girl. Viewers, viewers, for the rest of this, is, there's gonna be football references now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize. No, no, we started. I, I no, we started. It. I know it's fine. I can't it's okay. help myself. It's okay. <laughs> uh. But yeah, so she's driving through the movie, uh, through the city, and then she's driving a green car, and this is like a smooth transition because then Paprika's driving, and then it transitions into um, the doctor, who yeah. uh, it's uh, I think they call her uh, a, 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 a Chiba Atutsuki, a Tots, a Tusko, a Tusko. Um, so the the female doctor. <laughs> yes, the female doctor. Well, I wanted to say her name at least once before we start calling on the doc. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I get that. I get that. She it transitions into her, and she's in a par- and she parks the same green car into a parking garage, tries to catch the elevator, and gets halted by a huge man, literally stuck. And he tells her about the DC Mini being stolen, and they call her boss, and they discuss it. They discuss if it's an inside job. The chief. And because their boss is like the chief, he's a small little bald dude with a chrome dome, yeah. and suspicion grows, and they're trying to hide it from the chairman. And they walk into the office, and then the chairman, who is like Professor X, if he was Japanese, turns yeah, around. That's fact. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> and and starts monologuing about how like they've taken the power of God and put it in their own hands, and this is not okay. This is immoral. They can't do this. It's not okay to intrude into the minds of others. To be to be more specific, Daniel, whoever stole hmm. it can connect to any other person's mind who has used it, which yes, is they the don't, crazy part. They don't learn that yet, though. No, yes. they they talk about that from the intro. Like, like right before, right before she goes in and talk, like right before they go in to talk to the chairman dude, she says that in the hallway. Oh, I must have missed that. Then never I'm pretty, mind. I'm pretty positive. Because I, I do remember them talking about that, but it was, they talk about it again in another scene yeah. after uh, when they go to the diner. But, oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah. So it's they, so anytime, crazy. Anyone who's used the. The DC Mini. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's it's, uh, a, it's, it's same. <laughs> anytime they use that, they can be jumped into. They can be pretty much dream hacked by the terrorists. Yeah, like whenever. And uh, though, dude, that would be so. Tough. That's like it. It would essentially be like narcolepsy. It would essentially. Uh, yeah. It would. It would exactly be this. If you had sleep paralysis and a sleep yeah. paralysis demon and had narcolepsy. Pretty much. That is what that would and, be. <laughs> and because normally you have to be asleep to go into the DC mini. Yeah, but, he, uh, can, he can pull you into dreams. Yeah, the, the person who can. St- yeah, the person who stole it. And so while the chairman, um, Japanese Professor X, is telling them he's going to defund their project, the chief starts kind of to lose it it goes on like a huge <laughs> rant and starts talking about a big parade and just rambles <laughs> off into like a no like this is when i was like i'm gonna be so confused this movie is gonna like right? after like this monologue i was like what the fuck just happened Dude, like i every... almost just rewinded but yeah. i was like i don't think i'm gonna understand it even if yeah. i rewatch watch it you can't, like... like every every scene slowly get like to describe this movie is that every scene slowly gets pulled into a dream. It's every slowly every and scene slowly gets more and more mad. Yeah, every scene starts with information in reality, and someone gets pulled into dream dreamsville, and then essentially escapes, and or doesn't escape. And the way that they do every transition is just. 
It's so oh, yeah, like, wonky, we, dude. <laughs> we can't even like do the animation no. for this. You just have to watch it. You it's have like, to watch it. It's insane. It's like Alice in Wonderland meets Inception meets uh meets uh Doctor Strange meets anime. Meets That's what this movie is. Howl's Moving Castle. Meets Acid Trip. And then oh, this God. is this movie. Yeah. yeah. It, it's pretty much all of those things and that that is this movie. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's so crazy but the old dude uh he runs down the halls through and leaps through the window yeah <laughs> and then uh we cut to a huge parade of dolls everything it's so and creepy. we also yeah and we see the old doctor sitting on top of the throne being carried by dolls yeah and while this is while this is happening we see the doctors in another room watching his dream in real time discussing they got pulled into a dream. He was attacked by the terrorist. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> remember this parade, because unfortunately, it will be coming back. Yeah, it's like the, the, the Johnny Cash song, except not a train. Dream uh, three. <laughs> dream three. So um, while they're going over the older doctor, the chief, um, while they're going over his dream, they get a, a tip to go to this like super suspicious apartment and it's creepy and disgusting as fuck because the 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 apartment is one is the assistant of the a doctor uh yeah the guy who invented the dc mini yeah he made the dc mini and his assistant humuro is has not been at work and they think he stole it, and so yeah. they go to his apartment to investigate. And it's, like, it's so disturbing. It's, like, dolls everywhere and, like, robots with signs that literally say, like, help me. Uh, the female doctor... Yeah, it's... it's so it's so fucked. <laughs> it's uh, uncomfortable. The, the female doctor finds a picture with a face of a person, and the it's the same person that the older doctor dreamed of or something like that, and she turns around and... She sees that there's a door in the floor that leads down a, a level. Climbs down it and she sees a, a hallway of like children's paintings or like j- children's drawings like on the walls. Like of, of, of robots holding hands and blue butterflies and it's it's all like really surreal. So you kind of can tell when the characters start like walking into dreams if that makes sense like at least could could you daniel since this was the first time you watched it could you tell when they started to like walk like walk into dreams or were you like oh fuck like what's going on usually um i could there was only a couple times where and later in the movie where they intentionally try to trick you um but for the most part i could always tell when they were going into a dream like in this scene specifically she goes into the closet and then sees like a ladder down into a hidden basement which is like to me when i saw that i was like okay i'm going to assume this is not real and this is a dream and then the moment she walks through that hallway and she sees like the the uh the whole theme park is when I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, this is this is a dream. There, there is not a hidden theme park outside. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's like there's like Ferris wheels and like merry-go-rounds everywhere, and she yeah. sees this like creepy kid, like on like a stairwell, right? Which is the same one they saw in the parade. Yeah, and in his room, they saw it in the room on yeah. like, a picture frame. This this is a reoccurring doll kid thing. Yeah, it's yeah and uh so she she goes to like try and hop over the fence like between her and the kid and reality like tears away like a picture off of like a frame right Mm -hmm. and she like starts falling and then she gets caught by another doctor because she then wakes up and realizes that she was about to vault off of a building yeah, she was off. She was she, on the railing of the balcony, yeah. about to fall forward. Yeah, but in the dream, she was just hopping over a fence, trying to get to a creepy little doll kid. Yep. <sighs> oh, and the doll—we missed it. But the reason why they thought it was uh, the assistant 
is because in the dream on the monitor they were watching, the doll who was started talking to them and was being different than the rest of the the rest of the toys, his head turned and it turned into the assistant, which is oh, why they're like, yeah, huh? "Oh, he must have stole it." So, yer. There's just a lot of little details oh, uh, dude, of this yes. movie. Yeah, I mean, you also just watched it last night, so like, yeah, I did. I it's watched fresh. it. I watched it a week ago, and I haven't watched it since. Because okay, yeah, we were supposed to record this one last week, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> I was excited. Yeah, sorry about the break, all y'all, no, but we're well, yeah. about to get some good ass content. Honestly, so. though, mm. honestly, honestly, um. It's this movie is like a uh, Freddy Krueger. Like, have you seen Have you seen Nightmare on Elm Street? Mm-hmm. Have you watched any of those movies? No. You should watch one of them. Mm, okay. The reason why I say it, I I, I know I, of him. Yeah. I I know what his I know his shtick. Yeah, he you should. You people should. In dreams. Yeah, you should watch mm. the uh, you should watch the original one, like the very first. Okay. One. You should watch it with Patrick since he's a horror and aficionado or something like that yeah yeah <laughs> probably he probably said both <laughs> yeah probably i loved it like the doctor who created the dc mini he's like i'm never gonna stop you know like he he gives his best uh naruto tribute you know like mm-hmm. i'll never give up that's my nindo way and uh the female doctor gets another call and then they get another tip and then it just goes to a parade walking through a jungle because, you know, good transition. <laughs> yeah. And in the jungle, Paprika is attempting to help the older doctor. So Paprika's back. Oh, by the way, when the doctor, the female doctor is being um, first transitioned into her dream and she saw like the the downstairs ladder, like a slight ghost of Paprika showed up behind her saying don't do it really yeah i don't know if you noticed that nope didn't i did yeah uh, that's good shit a a slight ghost of hers showed up and now this is like since the first dream we saw in the beginning of the movie this is the first time paprika fully even shows up and she's attempting to get the older doctor uh but gets interrupted by the one who stole the dc mini and there's like a little like struggle fight scene but then uh, she then, like, turns into, like, a weird girl, and the doctor's like, oh, I helped you. And then it gets all weird and, like, a little little sensual. Yeah. And yeah. then she, like, melts into the doctor and blows him up like a balloon, and he pops. And when he pops, it wakes him up pretty much outside of the, out of the dream. Yeah. And with him now uh, awake, he's talking to the female doctor, and she tells him to remain in bed. And whatnot. And the older doctor gets a call on his phone and it's a detective and they talk about Paprika. They talk about her like a product almost, more broadly, a call girl. Yes, that um, is that is my opinion, sir. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. I didn't see it said Eric's opinion until <laughs> after I read it. That is Eric's opinion. That is my opinion. The way that they talk about her, uh, in like a couple of scenes or something like that, when they're like when him and the detective are like walking down like the like the um the courtyard or whatever like of the hospital mm-hmm. the way that they talk about her is more of like a product like oh yeah isn't that well, paprika like really helping you it does that make sense they they like, talk about her like they even they call her their dream girl like the yeah. girl of their dreams yeah which but just like, which just makes me think of like she's like she's she's a call girl you know like yes she's still doing her job therapy wise like she's still very smart and everything but she's also like two men's woman woman's woman of their dreams you know like, i think it's just horny men <laughs> yeah well that i mean no i'm saying that too because we both at the beginning of this podcast were like ah redhead yeah dream you know mm, so like, yeah fair fair <laughs> fair we i mean made we, a, I made we, a spicy redhead joke yeah yeah we fell well, into to that be fair, instantly to be fair, i made the spicy joke because her name's paprika <laughs> i mean yeah but then you but then you said something about red hair so it just instantly was like yeah oh, track yeah which, but mm-hmm. it, it just makes sense. But the way that they're talking about her is how we are talking about her now. Yeah. It's a spicy redhead. 
Yeah. yeah. And the female doctor is revealed to be Paprika while walking down the, like, the a walkway in the hospital and window. We see, like, her reflection change into Paprika and asks, do you want me to dive into your dreams? And she answered by, I haven't done that in a while. And we don't fully, like, know she's Paprika until a little bit later because the detective is, like, talking to the doctor later and he's like, is that paprika and like maybe she is oh dude and, like, when i and, when and I... some of the other doctors like talk to her and like you should be more like paprika and she's like i'm not paprika yeah and so we don't really know like how she's paprika if she's like altered her they never explain how paprika came about we just know that this female doctor is paprika oh okay so first time i watched this movie i did not put this together just so you know the first time I watched really? this, movie, well, uh, dude, the first time I watched this movie, I was high. high as I was high as yeah. yeah, I was really high the first time I watched this movie. Fair. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't distinguish that. So this movie's really weird. <laughs> like, yeah, towards the end Here? when, yeah, can yes. Oh, <laughs> I can imagine that was even <laughs> made, weirder if you made, never picked up on it and you never made, connected those dots. It you made were probably no so sense. Dude, thank you for <laughs> understanding where I was going. Yeah, dude. It okay. Made well, no sense at all. It was ah, it was very weird. So, we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about that once we get there. <laughs> yes. Uh, but the detective is going over case files and he gets an email link and it looked like it was like one of his dreams um from Paprika, but it was like a video that he like clicked through and then we enter the the video and it puts him like in a dream state almost and he's meeting with paprika and and she asks him if he likes movies and like they start she tries to talk to him about it because she uh earlier in the movie said that those like quick scenes he was going through were like movies Mm -hmm. and even like equated one of them to tarzan because he was swinging through the jungle one of them was like a a spy thriller on the train uh, getting choked out exactly like equating those to different types of movies and he's like oh i don't like movies and paprika responds with oh i love movies and takes him into a strip like a old-timey strip mall of movie billboards walking down the street to see uh all the different movies from the opening scene and uh when she tries to like get him to go into one of them he sees like a sign and like mentally blocks it off and is like no I am not, no, we are not doing this. And, like, all the movies, like, billboards go black and all, like, like big, like, metal doors slam in front of them. Yeah. And that's the, like, where we kind of transition. Dude, the, like, I think the reason why I love this movie is because it's about a therapist who loves movies. I just put that together. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I, I, I think, think that if uses... I were to be a therapist, I would do this. <laughs> you would use movies. Yes. I I love this movie because of the. Det- I like this movie for several reasons. Artistically, it's super interesting. Oh, it's so but crazy. The de- but the detective is the reason why I kept like what pull. I was rooting for the detective this whole movie. I felt like and he, I felt like his story he... was actually the main story. Oh, same. He. Yeah. I personally feel like his. His story is like the the message and the carrier that allowed the director to do all the wacky shit. Like, yeah, okay, well then what if it's but for also therapy? Says okay. something. Yeah, yeah, and it's like they needed they needed something to like be like the carrier that allowed them to go through this weird mess. And yeah. his story is that that boat. It is the voyage we go through. Yeah, dude, it's it's a it's a it's a good one. Um, a man and a woman are, uh, a man and a woman are both, uh, army marching down a hallway (laughs) with, with brooms, like whacking people that they're like being controlled because they've used the, the DC mini, right? Yeah. And they're like, the female doctor is like trying to find it still and everything. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Excuse me. Okay um yeah and the chairman's like forbids them from using the dc mini at this point because he's like the person funding the project yeah and he's just like 
no, you guys cannot, you can't use it anymore because there's too many people getting harmed by it. Um, and while talking to the two other doctors, the the female doctor finds a clue of where the suspect might be off the back of the t-shirt. And so they go to the theme park and that was in the female doctor's dream that nearly she fell off the, the rails of. The female doctor travels back to where they saw the doll sitting on the staircase, but in real life. And then they're just kind of standing there talking. Her spidey sense goes off. And this dude comes tumbling from... Um, <laughs> <laughs> she does have spidey sense dude, pretty much. Yeah. Well, because, like, <laughs> I feel like her... I guess we could just call it like her paprika is just like always working. Because like, at the beginning, when she leaves the detective's house... And then, like, the intro, right? Like, that's just her driving home or driving to the office. But it's her, like, imagination. And she's just, like, daydreaming. You know? If that makes sense. That's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. Wait, did you not watch it like that? I didn't think she was daydreaming. I just thought it was an anime intro. So they were taking creative freedom with it. Oh, okay. Well, now think of this movie with that perspective. So, like, that's why, like, yeah. towards the end when everything, like, starts to melt together, it would be just, like, if everybody got caught daydreaming. Does yeah, that makes no, that makes it's, sense. It's, it's kind of like uh, Naruto, you know? The yeah. infinite dream thing? Yeah. Excuse me. My the brain. infinite tsunami. Yeah, the infinite tsunami. tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, yeah, so we're, we're at the... Yes. Uh, so right the amusement park some dude falls from the sky bashes through a window this dude ends up being the guy who stole the dc mini it's the assistant the guy they've been looking for yes um the dc mini's like in his brain like oh yeah it's like this it's kind of like a headset with like well it's not a headset it's like backwards sunglasses it, no, it's like a, like, uh, if you've ever put on a one ear, it's like if you've ever put on, like, a one ear headphones. <gasps> yeah, you right. It's like, and it, like, wraps around the head and has, like, a part that's, like, a prong that sticks up behind your ear. It's like that, but it's just, like, that half. And then it has, like, weird tentacle things that latch into your head. But, like, the tentacle would... things grew into his, like, skull at this point. Yeah. That and it was, disgusting. Ugh. Eek Barba Durkle. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> uh, the detective has a heart attack, or what he thinks is a heart attack, and the female doctor uh, wants to dive in into the dude's brain who fell from the sky, right? Which makes no sense. Like, why would she want to do that? It doesn't Information. Make sense. Information. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> while uh while t- uh talking about the risks uh one of the doctors starts to make blame on the man who created uh it like the man who created the dc mini and says yeah. that it's because he's immature and the female doctor asks if there's anyone who if there's anyone else who could take his place like she's She's like, yeah, he is immature and childish as hell, but like, he's also a fucking genius, right? Like, she, you, you can kind of, you can see that she defends the people that she loves, right? Like, she's, yeah, she, she has paprika tendencies, but she's like the exact opposite of paprika. She respects him, but is yeah. not afraid to call out his bullshit. Like, she calls yeah, him a slob. dude, later in the movie. And says he's a child. Like, she's yeah. not afraid to call out his bullshit, but she also respects his genius. Yeah, and that, yeah. And when she does that, I, I'm not going to lie, when she does that, it's pretty solid. I, yeah. I like that part. It's um, heartwarming. It is. Because she's, like, just tearing him down, but also, like, you're better than this kind of shit. Um, yep. But the, the older doctor and the female doctor are walking down the hallway, and the female doctor uh, runs down the aisle and slowly changes into clothes, like, through the reflections into Paprika, because she gets, like, an assignment kind of thing. And then it transitions, like... This. Yeah, so we're back into the circuits from the very beginning, which I told you we would be, unfortunately. Yes. And so I... Oh, dude, the, the circus just gives me, like, anxiety every time it shows up. Really? It's the music. It's the music that plays. 
And it's meant to be. It's just utter chaos and nonsense. Yeah, and this and... is the parade, correct? Yeah. Yes, Sorry. yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, not the circus. Sorry, the parade. Yeah. I got that's, confused. That's my bad. <laughs> we are back at the Science Foundation. The bigger doctor has finished the DC mini because he started working on repairing it after they got pieces out of the dude's head. And he made two and decides to put one on him and the man that fell through the glass because they were really close friends. And throughout the movie, they're building like this narrative that the assistant was jealous of the guy who made yeah. the DC mini. And so he just wants to know why, like what brought him there. And so he puts one on him and puts the other on him. And then he falls asleep and the parade continues over a bridge. So we're on the bridge with the parade happening. The bigger man is uh, in the dream world. He's in the robot and he's talking to the man who fell through the grass. Um, starts with an H, I'm going to say uh, Himuro. Um, Himuro. And, uh, but he's not him in his actual body. He's like one of the dolls that he likes. Yeah. And... And uh, all the creepy dolls explain that it multiplies, so once the door opens, anyone can cam come in if they have the equipment. And the dreams are bleeding together. It's not just one dream, it's bleeding. It's multiple people's dreams now. Yeah, so he and... could, like, hop from person to person. Or, like, anybody exactly. would be able to. Exactly. Um, back in the theater where Preparica and the detective are talking, uh, they speak about uh, camera directing and angles. And uh, the detective is talking about all these different angles and talking about how his dreams are in these different camera angles. And Paprika says, so you do like movies? And that he, uh, that he has solved the mystery and that he wasn't expecting that he killed himself. Or maybe it was someone uh, like himself. Yeah, this and is when detective... this is when they're sitting in the bar. By the oh way. yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And they're like analyzing what his last dream or whatever. And the detective is uh, almost to the point of epiphany, and then the parade uh, shows up. Oh no, no, they're not in the bar. Oh they're, no, they're, they're still they're yeah. still in the theater. They're yeah, they're in sitting the in the movie theater. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, and you're good. And then the parade arrives and at this uh oh yeah movie, dude it starts to like leak through like the vents in the back and then it like pops through the doors it's so yep. creepy and then we start realizing the dreams are starting to just mesh into each other and uh the detective fell victim of the ecstasy of dreaming and joins the parade and uh paprika tries to stop um the doctor who's in the robot she tries to stop a tokita um hmm. and uh the old doctor's on the phone with the female doctor um both heading to the science foundation so we cut back to the real world and one's in the lab they observe the big doctor when they find the big doctor um with the humamaru um on like tables dreaming and she was like why would he do this without me why did he jump in there i wanted to do this yeah um and so paprika jumps into um tokita dr tokita's mind and try to save him while he's in his dream and she finds a mirrored wall in the middle of the street and she breaks it and she runs down the alley but by the way before they do that we get to see like a really cool angle of her flying down on uh, a like a cloud. Oh yeah, that is that scene is really cool. Yeah, I really really do like that scene, dude. Oh, this movie's so trippy. Just thinking is. about this movie is it's just so weird. Um, so she after she like breaks the mirror, right? She finds a stairwell and walks past um, it or something. Well, yeah, walks past it. And she tries to find her way. Like, she gets kind of, like, lost, right? She tries to find her way out. And she's looking for clues um, to see where to go. And um, she steps on a squeaky toy. Uh, sorry. That is a replicant of the big doctor. It's, like, a little, like, plushy toy, right? 
and mm-hmm. um it grows or it, it looks it looks up and there's like hundreds of them and they're all shaking their heads and she sees a giant statue of the doctor and of the I hate that I did not write names now and I apologize. Yeah, um, so she no. sees uh the Himar uh Takitos. Yeah. Um uh like his face on the doll and he's like spinning and his head spinning around. And then she sees the statue of the doctor uh more more like the, the skinnier doctor. O- o- Osen- Osanya. Right? The skinnier the- one? Yes, the one the, who sa- the one who saves her from jumping over the balcony. Yes, because yeah. there's four main doctors. There's Doctor yeah. Chiba, our main character. Doctor Morio, the one who saved her from jumping off the ba- uh, balcony. Doctor uh, Tokito, who uh, Tokita, who is the genius. And then we have the assistant Timuro, and then we have Chief. They just call him Chief the whole time. Okay, yeah, I I do There's apologize a, a small for not writing dude. names now because it's only messing me up. Because <laughs> you're all good. I yeah. have all the names opened in another tab which is the oh. only reason why i know them right now but you're continue. smart um but she turns into a fairy and flies down and she gets caught in some wind um but she makes her way in finding her directions and she finds out uh that there's like this root system of like of like all the dreams kind of and there's this like decaying body of a man that's just like in the grass it's it's really weird dream stuff that's happening now we're getting into the movie where nothing makes sense and it's really oh, hard to describe <laughs> yeah and it's, it's this it, is the body of um uh himaru now the guy who fell through the glass that's yeah. his body the okay decaying body that right died. right 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 because she's jumping in to his mind as well as the other doctor and since mm-hmm. he's dying it would make sense to like show that got it he's a shell of himself now but because they think he was a victim of a terrorist attack they don't think he was the one who was that was doing that yeah just a second um yes sorry um you're good but after she finds this, um, her so she she um, after she finds uh, yeah, the man, yeah. uh, finds his body, she then sees like a big tree with all the roots chasing her, and it's the director's face on it, like all the vines. Yeah. It is wonky. Do um, you want to finish this one? And then I can do the next one. Or something? Sorry. My my brain dude right now is You're not good, working. You're good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mind. Um, so let's just like, you can you edit it yeah. the way you want. Um, I got you. So what happens is then after she flies uh as a fairy and finds the decayed body of humaru uh she then finds a root system that leads to like a a tree head like a bot um of the director and then she realizes he might be behind this and um the whole like terrorist attack and the vines start attacking her and she tries to run away and uh, unfortunately escape escapes and while this is happening chief the small little bald dude is talking to her through like a headset because paprika can hear him because he's like lobbed into her into the dream not through the dc mini but through like a microphone and so his he can't like interact per se but his face will show up on objects here and there, and that's how he can talk to them. Yeah. As he's watching. And he's supposed to, like, emergency pull her out of the dream if something bad go- uh, happens. Um, and so she's, like, requesting... Um, Paprika's requesting the chief pull her out while the roots are chasing her. But uh, 
he's unable to pull her out. He's trying to, and it's not working. And But she's able to escape. The female doctor and the old doctor travel to the... She wakes up. Uh, he was able to pull her out. Sorry, yeah. He pulled her out. She wakes up. They go to the old doctor's house to see... Uh, to the, the director, specifically. Yeah. To kind of uh, confront him. And they explain what's happening. And that every dream is molding together. And then... He turn, uh, walks in front of him, and it was a trap, and he has uh, vine legs and starts attacking her. And it's a trap. <laughs> and Paprika's still in the dream. The old man, the chief, was not able to pull Paprika out of the dream. And so she starts running through the hallways, vines molding through the walls. Uh, she jumps into a, a picture frame and turns into a griffin, which is such a badass scene, by the way. Right. Right. And she tries to fly away. The other doctor spears her down and falls into water and turns into... uh, Spears her down. She falls into water. She turns into the mermaid and starts swimming away. But she gets caught again and being eaten by a whale that looks like the man. uh, That looks like the old man. Yeah, she got got Pinocchio'd. Oh, straight up. And then she gets tossed into the parade. At the feet of the man, uh, the old director. Yeah. And uh, flying away. On a, so then she sees pa- Paprika sees the earlier version of Paprika yeah, when she, she sees was flying herself. on the ground. There's also time travel. <laughs> yeah, and she says, "It's a trap. Leave." And then Paprika like, kind of like changes to that perspective of her on the yep on the cloud, and yep. so then she starts running away. And she gets absorbed by a ton of blue butterflies flying towards her. And she then is laying on a table, pinned to the wings of a, bu- a big butterfly, spread out and held captive. Do you want to take this part? Yeah, I got you. Thank you. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I got you. Uh, first of all, uh, this next part is tough. Um, disturbing. It's very, very, very disturbing. So, um the 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 doctor that she works with the skinnier one that saved her from jumping over the rail is has her pinned down by her wings cuz she's a butterfly and um he he's he's uh, oddly obsessed with her and wants to keep her for himself kind of if that makes sense it's really creepy yeah, he's like in love stalker in love with her yeah he's l- infatuated um yeah. it's disturbing and so uh he threatens to tell her um he threatens her and tells her that it was him uh that he was chosen to protect um the the what is that word this word I can never say this word. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Thank you. I never think that's. I never think that that is what that word sounds like. If that makes sense. But yeah, I can see like the 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 sink part. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Uh, to protect the sanctuary, and the sanctuary is like um the old man's house, but in real, fake world. I don't know. I don't know. It's just it's got like a bunch of butterflies everywhere. This dude is just crazy. He's crazy as yeah. fuck. And nothing makes sense, right? Um, yeah, at this point, we're like in and out of dreams, like reality. I don't even. Dream. I don't even. We're think, still. We're still in the dream right now. Like since this episode has started, we've been in a dream pretty much. Yeah. Besides, like one or person, two scenes. Yeah, the only person who's not in a dream right now is the chief attempting yeah. to pull her out. Yeah, and we never actually get like we get like glimpses of him just like looking at a monitor, but either way. Um, Yes, but he uh, he slaps her and tells her that uh, she doesn't – she slaps him and tells him that, you know, no, I don't want you. And then he's like, you don't want me to get rough kind of thing, and it's really creepy. Um, is, it, is it at this scene or is it later down when the creepy thing happens? 
It is at this scene, isn't it? It's at this scene. It is at this scene. Okay, I'm going to say it. Because then, yeah. Okay, so it's really creepy. It's so disturbing. I have to describe it, though, because this is like... This is like the climax of the movie almost. Um, it's 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 a big personal moment for Paprika. It is, and it's, he like creepily like literally like, literally slides his hands like underneath of her skin almost, and then like r- rips Paprika in half like 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 paper mache almost. And it's the female doctor, like the one that's in reality. So he's like mm-hmm. broken the persona of paprika so she's just like she is she doesn't have her armor anymore she is the most vulnerable that she could be at that moment and he's just like oh so fucking creepy dude and at this point Uh, when he does that the doctor underneath the skin's naked and that's when the old man because the old man and the younger doctor so the director is the old man uh doctor Sin- Sindra and Uni, and then Dr. Morio are the two who are the villains. They're teaming up together, and the old dude, he, like, tree growths out of his neck. Yeah. And is like, what are you doing? You can't control your lust. You need to listen to me. She needs to die. And yeah. then, like, he- and they start, like, having, like, an internal struggle of what to do with Paprika. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, that is facts. And while this is all happening, the um the the detective is is sitting in a bar and um uh, we learn why he doesn't like the number 17 because when he was 17, he directed an indif- an independent film with one of his best friends. Uh like and while we get this explanation, like the room becomes dark and the projector plays uh the man like the man running away in the hallway right except Mm -hmm. this time we figure out like we actually learn we learn so much and i'm actually gonna this i know i'm i'm passing you the ball a lot daniel but you just watched this movie and you you really liked this part of the movie like the detective part of the movie i won't lie i really like the paprika side of the movie because i like the dream aspect so yeah. If you want to describe this part because you like this part more, I will give oh, you yeah. a uh, chance. So pretty much, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Yeah, so no, when please. He, the detective uh, is talking to the bartenders. Yeah. And they're like, "Why you don't like the number 17? He's like, no. And he's like, oh, okay. Good setup. Yep. And then, then he's like, because I, and then later they start talking not about that anymore. He said, yeah, because I was 17 when I directed a film, and it clicked. The reason he doesn't like 17 is because he was 17 when he directed the film. Yeah. Then it's, like, him sitting in the theater again, kind of, but, like, he's still at the bar. He just turns around, and the projector plays, and it's him describing that he wanted to become a filmmaker, that he wanted to go to do that, and him and his best friend would make uh, films together, and his best friend was, like, the better version of him yeah. in almost every way. Um, but then at the same time, he like, they kind of mirrored each other. And he felt like they were like, they're each other's like halves. They were each other's partners. They grew up together. They made movies together. They were, they were it, intertwined. Yeah. And um, they started to make uh, the, this film of a, um, I think it was two brothers, one who was a, uh, a one was a criminal, and one was the detective, and they were chasing each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, what the the detective was chasing him, and they filmed that together there, and that shows like young versions of them, but they never finished the film. And uh, and then he realizes that he never got shot. The, his friend the and the friend is the friend that he never got to finish the film w- with is the friend he keeps uh, is the kid that he keeps seeing mm-hmm. dead in all of his dreams when he's running down the hallway and he realizes his friend never actually got shot he sees him in the bar and chase after him and that's when we learn that his friend actually got sick and 
died. Yeah. Because his friend went while, while he decided not to go after becoming a filmmaker, and he quit on that job. He got too scared, pretty much, is what it they kind of chalk it up to. Yeah. His friend went to film school and then got sick and later died within a year. But he never told the detective that he was sick at all. He never knew that. And we get, like, cuts here and there of the friend telling the detective, but what about our film? What about the ending? What about the ending? And yeah. he's wanting to, and his friend just desperately wants to finish it. And we understand now because he's dying. Yeah. And so now the detective is pretty much tortured with the idea of his friend is dead. And he, and he got his best friend his partner that he he calls him his partner that's how close the air is dead now and he let him down and he gave up on his dream and he blames himself for his friend dying and yeah. he holds a lot of guilt and while this is happening he uh goes he opens the door and finds himself in the strip mall with all the movie theaters and with a with a sign that says uh, paprika the damsel uh, in distress and he runs into the movie theater and sees her being tortured and this Your, is actually yeah, when we see the, her skin yeah. get ripped yeah, yeah that's yeah that's the <laughs> and while this is happening the the old doctor and the young doctor are fighting and then while this is happening the detective breaks through the movie screen because we see the wall, like, he's walking into, like, the movie screen in the theater. Yeah. As the wall of the sanctuary is starting to stretch, stretch, stretch. And he breaks through and puts his coat on the doctor. Because at first he runs to Paprika, the skin of Paprika, <laughs> ripped. <laughs> and, and the doctor <gasps> is still on the ground I now because she, like, got thrown onto the ground. And so yeah. he grabs her. And puts his coat on her, and he runs, and uh, runs into the strip mall movie theaters, and run. Uh, and the detective is asking the old doctor how to get out. Uh, he runs into uh, the chief. He's talking to the chief, by the way. Yeah. Uh, not the director, the chief. Uh, and the the because uh, by the way, the chief is the one who got the detective, the DC mini, because they are old college friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the chief is like, oh, wow, you're here. I didn't know you were into this. You were in this dream. He's like, yeah. He's like, I don't have time to explain what's going on. Go this way. So he runs into the strip mall. Yeah, this is also into... this is also when everything is still like bleeding together. Yeah, all the dreams are like going together yeah. pretty much at this yeah. point. Um, So he runs into the Tarzan, uh, the Tarzan movie theater. And he sorry one sec. yeah he he runs into like the opening scenes of the movie like where he got the shit kicked out of him right yes so like and this is oh this is this yes. is the uh this is the display of like overcoming all of the fears and things right and so, i it's oh, so i good. love it yes it's so good and it really shows him getting over his trauma in a way yep. And like he go, he's now carrying. And by the way, when all of these scenes had paprika in them, and now it has the doctor in them. Uh huh. And it has the real and it, person. And it's and it's him. It's him like saving, not like him saving her and all of them, but like him defending himself, defeating and, everything back, and per, and protecting her. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Because in the spy one, when he's on the train, the young doctor's trying to get paprika back. And he flips him over and starts beating the shit out of him. And Paprika's in, like, the, the corner passed out. Not Paprika, sorry. Uh, yeah. Dr. I know, I, uh, yeah. Chiba. Yeah. And so he picks her up. And um, and they keep running. And he goes through all the movies. And then uh, the... And he's chasing down um, the, the younger Dr. Doctor. Morio. Yeah. Yeah. And they get to the hallway scene. But dun, always dun. trips up the detective. And he laughs and he's like, you can't get me. And he actually shoots. The detective shoots Dr. Morio in You're... the back as he's about to get out the door. Hey. And 
and then he falls, and then it cuts to the detective literally blowing the smoke out of the gun, and it turns into a James Bond movie, and people in the theater stand up and start clapping, and it shows him, like, holding paprika and doing, like, a pose. Yeah. And before the credits roll, the detective clean uh, cleans over and gives the female doctor a kiss. She wakes up from the dream, and when she's waking up, the chief is trying to wake her up, too, and she smacks the chief in the face, <laughs> yeah. like, just reflexively. Yeah. Uh, and but... then the chief and the doctor talk about what uh, what is real and what is fake. She's like, am I in the re- – is this even real? Be honest. And the <laughs> and chief is like, well, this this – this slap feels real (laughs) yeah it still stings and then the doctor who was shot in the dream world falls on he's like his body is slowly like kind of like half there like almost like like it's like fading fading and she sees him and then he falls onto the ground and starts to break reality and then the old man the director the bald man sorry the director sees it cuts to them in a room together and he's like no you can't you can't die you can't leave and this is when we learn that the director who's in the wheelchair sorry japanese professor x we're back um we're back (laughs) he's been trying to use the younger doctor dr morio yeah he wants to meld their minds so then he can end up living in his body in the real world yeah it's so fucked up (laughs) So he wants to do some of Orochimaru bullshit to him. He really does. Um, he really and so does. It's so creepy. And so, and while the the Morio is like falling, and now a black hole starts to absorb him because he's now like intertwining reality in the dream state. And this is where the movie, like from this point on, the movie does not make a ton more sense. No, <laughs> to be no, honest, it, it doesn't. Everything this after is the... this is just it's just full blown anime. Yeah, from this point back, I can rationalize most of what's going on, and it's, I can kind of track what's going on. From this point forward, it's pretty fucking confusing. And so he falls into the black hole, and I'll let you take us out. So I'll this you, this, yeah. this this huge battle takes place, right? And the the director, the bald um, man, the Professor Xavier gets what he always wanted he got legs but he becomes a titan he becomes a titan kaiju he he becomes (laughs) like galactus essentially like like he just looks so creepy and there's this like black hole that starts to like like suck in reality and it grows bigger with everything in the middle of the city yeah it's in the middle of the city and like they're all doing their best to fight it, and they're running away. And it's... by the way, the parade's back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The parade never leaves. <laughs> and uh, dude, it the the opening scene is really like undescribable. I'm not gonna lie. Like, yeah, because I, like... I, I I watched this. It just doesn't make sense. Like this, uh, it's it's it all. Let me actually say this. It all makes sense. But it feels like you're actually watching a dream. Yeah, it's it's hard to really describe without watching it as it's happening. Yeah, because you see like the the chief, the chief doctor, the short little dude, and um, the doctor Chiba. They're running, and they're about to fall. And she, like uh, chief is about to fall through the city, but, like through the off the building because the the big doll is now like in reality and crashes the building and he's about to fall and Chiba can't hold him. And that's when Paprika shows up and it's like Paprika's back now, but like Chiba's still alive too. So it's like both parts of her like entity are there now in reality. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really cool because hmm, I'm actually not going to describe this last fight scene. Because I like it a lot, and I want people to watch it. Oh yeah, okay. I think I'm not gonna one... lie. You can, yeah, I no. Think... I mean, you, you, you can explain anything. I'm just slowly realizing that I love this movie, to where I don't want to spoil it. If Fair. that makes I sense. Think, yeah, I think uh, we'll we'll 
it's hard. I definitely feel like kind of similar to the monologue that happens at the end in Midnight Mass, where yeah. you just kind of have to experience it for yourself. I do agree. I think this is just better to experience as a viewer. There is one scene in this, so the the world's decaying. Oh. <laughs> and um, there's one scene in in this end end fight thing. Yeah. That happens I do want to talk about. And it's when the doc so the doctor gets eaten by the robot. Yeah. Cause big, big, big boy. Doctor the man, Takata. Yeah, the man yeah. who created the DC Mini is now a giant mech. He's a giant robot. Yeah. He's a giant. And toy. he eats he eats the doctor, uh, Doctor Chiba, and says, "I need a little more paprika." <laughs> and he's oh, like, shit. "I need some spice." And he uh, he eats her, and then eventually, uh, big, uh, out of nowhere, big tall astral version of Doctor Chiba shows up, and she sees. Yeah, literally out of nowhere, like from yeah. an alley. Yeah, we and she sees the the robot because he's stuck in the just in the like, building. Yeah, just like the elevator. Yep, and oh. she sees it, and this is when we actually get the see the full scene of the elevator because we don't get to see it originally. We just see like her pulling him out. Yeah, and then we don't see, and then it cuts to them walking through the building, uh, trying to find the other yeah, doctors, and she's the on chief. the phone. Yeah, yeah, and so we get to see the full scene, and it's her telling him that like he's a slob and he's fat and she's like ridiculing him but then she but also that's she's why like i love you and she's like holding him and her head's on him it's like look guess what matter like what's on the inside matters and you are a genius but also take care of your outside too and then she starts but she starts like pumping him up yep. and then it's also mirrored and she's like giving him this this like beautiful statement of why she cares about him and why he's valuable and cuz he's like kind of ridiculing himself as well and it's and it's mirrored with her astral body hugging the robot while they lay down on the because he they both fall when she tries to help him out and then uh she turns into baby and then turns into yeah yeah a, a couple seconds later after some other stuff happens a, a, a baby crawls out of the robot's chest and then like kaiju battle like slurps like slurp this sounds a horrible descriptor but like slurps in the bad guy's energy she and then like becomes like like bigger and then yeah it's just like a weird like energy ramen noodle yeah ramen noodle energy battle (laughs) like she slurps him up like a ramen noodle and then he like it dies and goes back to like his throne in the parade what (laughs) <laughs> and it goes back to him sitting on like the the throne in the parade and he starts getting overtaken by the dolls oh yeah so creepy and then everything kind of fades away yeah and uh everything goes back to normal yeah and that's that's when we get personally i think the best part of it because then we see like the 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 creator of the DC minis in the hospital and the chief and Dr. Uh, Chiba are waiting for him and they have a really sweet like reunion and t- and stuff. But the best part of the movie, in my opinion, is like the most like gratifying part, like the, the most heart wrenching, but heartwarming is this last part walking down uh, the street. The detective and the chief are talking about paprika saying how she's like the dream girl yeah and and then he looks into the mirror and sees his best friend the one who died you're and and it's like it's okay it wasn't your fault you don't need to feel bad you finished our movie why do you think you became a detective hey you're living you're living our end. You're yeah. living our movie. You, you finished it in your own way. And I was like, oh! I've died a like, lot. Like, that nearly made me cry, dude. It was just so, like, oh, bro, it's such, like, in, in a movie of fucking acid trip, 
nightmare dream nightmare fuel it was still able ass. to hit the heart feels exactly and it and it and it like huh, it like tackles a young man giving up on his dreams yeah and but still in a way without knowing it living out his dreams for the one he loves in just a different way like yeah. he lived the dream and to honor his friend's memory without knowing it even though he gave up on what he loved which was movies and then he gets to finally get some type of closure about like the trauma and the loss and the grief of his friend and it's so beautiful chef's kiss Mwah. and then it the, the movie ends with him watching a video from paprika tell and she's like uh it's no it's a uh, note yes. from paprika and the note says good job on the case by the way and uh you should check out this movie and so it's him going to the movie theaters to go watch a movie, and then the movie ends. This movie ends there. Yep. Uh, fun, fun, fun movie fact. Fun, fun movie fact. At the end of the movie, like Daniel just said, when Paprika tells the detective to go watch the movie, the movie is called Dreaming Kids. And if you're like, I wonder if that's an actual movie, the answer is yes, it is, or was going to be. It's not actually a movie. Uh, the same writer who made this movie, um, his last movie was going to be Dreaming Kids, but he died before he could make it. So it never got released. Like, it got terminated oh. before it could be released. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, so there, there that's was one... That's not fun at all. That's not a fun fact. That's yeah, there, a sad fact. There was one movie. <laughs> there was one more movie after Paprika. And Paprika said, hey, go watch this movie, and we will never get to see that movie. That's tough, huh? That is so tough. I hope his Imagine getting a know movie, what the movie is. Imagine getting a movie reference, Daniel, from a dream therapist. And then you're never able to actually watch it. We won't, but he was. No, so. he can't, because... <laughs> It, no, that doesn't. It, if you, can, I can, you can't say that. Can't. No, 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 it doesn't count. <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> we don't get to see the movie that he watched. What if that movie was a direct tie-in to Paprika? Because I bet that movie starts with the, the ending of this sitting, one. The the detective sitting down into the movie theaters, yep. and then it starts, and then we don't. And then we see exactly the detective yep. until the very end again yep. when the movie ends and he walks out of the theater. Yep. I bet you. Or what if Dreaming Kids was the story of the detective? So he goes in to the theater to watch it, but then he watches his his movie. I I thought that might have been a chance. Uh, I I thought the Dreaming Kids might have been at first. I thought it was going to be like a like a, a a an analogy or a metaphor, like a physical representation of like him and his friends yeah. dream together in their life. But yeah. um one one to 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 the good place. No, no, this is a movie. One to National Treasure. Dare you. One to National Treasure. What would you where, where, where what would you put it? Um I'm just going to start answering all of these with names now. <laughs> Daniel, I give it Paprika. <laughs> oh, my Lord, dude. <laughs> is it notable? Oh, of course it. Of course. I can't. Yeah. Duh. Of course it is. It's one of my favorite movies. Like, one of yeah. my favorite animated movies. Um, I Personally, I think it's a national treasure, but I also think it's too weird to be a national treasure. Like, there's criterias for national treasures it has to be family yeah. friendly because everybody Not everything every everybody has to be able to enjoy a national treasure i don't Not think that there are people national treasure oh yeah no 100 percent. but i think that there are some people like me i think this movie is a national treasure but i know that this movie would not entice a lot of people like just simply because it's an anime, right? Like, I just know a lot of people who won't watch it simply yeah. just for that fact. That's 
that's a big turnoff. It it really is. People. Which I I I will say, if you are a person listening to this and you're against anime movies or animated movies, however you want to say it, it doesn't really matter. Um, you should give some animated movies a chance. Some of them are better than live action movies. I promise they are very very good, and I would say this one is one of them, simply just because it's it's very sci fi, very fantasy, um, but also very like, um, this might sound weird, but attached. I know that you would probably think like detached from reality, but I feel like this is if you're a person of dreams and you love dreaming, like this movie is like it's so easy to like fall into like I love dreaming and I love movies that is literally what I could talk about for the rest of my life forever dreaming and movies and this movie encapsulates it like so uniquely and like out of left field right that it it's just it's so good I love it I think it's a national treasure but if I were to put it on a one to ten I give it a ten yeah, I I think I feel like I know some people don't like animated movies because they associate them with children movies. Yeah. The thing about even though this is rated R, um, the thing about animated movies and animated TV shows is yes, they are not necessarily live action in that way. It can sometimes take away some of the realism, but at the same time, they can do things artistically that like a live action movie never would be. Like for example, the Avatar series is able because it is animated is able to take uh such creative freedom with their fights and their action and choreography yeah dude just imagine if they made a live action one Mm. that would be so so crazy mm, uh and so mm, uh but this does the same thing it takes a lot of silver liberties with the animation and it allows it to like they just do so many cool things and it's like it 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 If you like Inception, you'll like this. And this, in my opinion, is, like, Inception is, even though it is, like, in the dream world and they go, like, willy-nilly here and there. um, It's not as visually. Yeah, yeah, because it's still based in reality. Yeah. Like, the dreams are, for the most part, because they're trying to convince us, someone subconscious. Yeah, not only us, but you're trying to convince the subconscious of the person that you're dream heisting. That nothing's happening. So the subconscious has to kind of think it's like normal. You yeah. Know? And this is the and exact so, opposite because it doesn't fucking matter if you're being dream heisted. You just get dream heisted. And, and and this is is way like on the more wacky LSD trip. Yeah. Craziness like Matrix meets Doctor Strange. Like it's it's just wacky as fork. And those were really good descriptives. Thank you. Yeah, those um, are really spot on movie references right there. I mean, I feel like they they it take a lot of like elements of both of those movies. Oh, all of those movies, yes. Like fit the paprika very well. Um, I will say this movie is very visually intri- like very visually fun to watch, and uh, the plot is a bit confusing, but it also is like fun to kind of like try to figure out, and then um it is anchored by an emotional journey of the detective in which I think is fully realized in a beautiful way at the end in a way that I don't like, I think a lot of people in the modern world can relate to, to giving up on your dreams in a way. And it's, it's a sad thing to like, to to acknowledge that you're just like, not going to chase that anymore. Yeah. But then to also like, see that he kind of did it in his own way and also the grief of feeling like he betrayed his friend but he didn't and so the fact that i am talking about the same movie that has naked lady slurping ramen death kaiju yeah and 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 then detective having that emotional revelation is mind blowing, Eric. Yo, oh, the fact that this uh, is the same movie. Yeah. And I would say this is like a I want to say first viewing because I've only watched this movie once. Yes. I want to say it's an 8.8, 8, but I think it very could closely be on second and third viewings get richer and richer with the more details I see. Yeah. And because I'm no longer trying to like follow Understand. the movie. Yeah. 
I like kind of already know what's going on so I can pay more attention to like the smaller details. I think it could be like a 9, 9.2. Yeah. I don't want to say it's a 10 out of 10, mm. but it is extremely well done. And I think as uh, a very close, like a, a very high 8, low 9 type of movie. Yeah. No, I, 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 I will take that, dude. I give it a 10 yeah. purely just because it's almost a biased opinion. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's biased. It's not almost. It's biased. No, but it that's is. okay. But it's, that, it's, it's your also, opinion. Yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> it's your opinion. No nice. one can tell you your opinion is wrong. It's your opinion. They can you fuck right. off. You're <laughs> right. You're right. But yeah. trying to give more of like a, I guess, a rational review yeah. while still like, obviously, I enjoy the movie. That's oh, yeah. No. We're talking about oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. Big, big feels, dude. I, I think that this movie is just. It's a handful. It's a that lot. Is. It's a lot to take in. It's just insane. It just it doesn't make sense, but also makes sense. It just it, it requires big brain, at least a little. It, you will be lost the majority of the movie, but then it will all make sense. But you know what, um, you guys? It's okay to pause the movie. It's okay. Allow yourself to learn and understand. You want to know? It's also okay, Daniel. To subscribe? To, thank you. Yeah. Uh, to subscribe. If you enjoyed listening to the Noted Podcast, uh, you should remember to turn notifications on and to subscribe because you won't want to miss out on Wednesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. weekly uploads. Because we're consistent. Besides last week, we don't count those. We don't talk we about took them. A little, we took a little <laughs> break. We don't talk about them. Uh, but we yeah. got good, exciting content for you. So. Yes, sir. We appreciate it, and uh, it helps us. And, uh, you know, because, you know, you know, that's how that's how it works, guys. Come on. Um, Thank you yeah. for listening. Hey, guess have what? A fantastic, guess what? Huh? Guess what? Did you know that we have gotten four new subscribers in like, oh. in like three weeks thank you did you we know appreciate that? you did you also I did not know, know not that know that. that's the most active activity that we've gone in like three months <laughs> keep it up guys comment ah! please we we enjoy you we appreciate you have a fantastic day night afternoon wherever you are <laughs> they understand. Have a fantastic night. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no.